What's up guys, Robsco here, and I'm going to show you guys how to lube your linear switches featuring our Gateron clear switches, and tactile switches featuring our Gateron brown switches. They basically have the same steps, except tactile switches have some exceptions due to the conflicting factors between smoothness and tactility, because the more smooth the switch is, the less tactile it becomes. What you need is a small flathead screwdriver, blunt tweezers, a small brush, and lube of your choice with me choosing Crytox 205 grade 0. To start off, you need to open up the switch and you have a few options to do this. For cherry switches, you can use a small flathead screwdriver and wedge it into the space, and by pushing down and using physics, you can open up the bracket. While keeping that one side open, you want to do the same on the other side to open up the switch completely. You can also use blunt tweezers to open up the switch, which I prefer because it requires less strength and most people have tweezers than small screwdrivers. For Kale and Otemu style switches, the bracket is completely different, and you need to have a small flathead screwdriver to open it up. And you basically need to carefully drive the flathead into the corner so that it goes under the bracket. Then slowly move it to the center and then pull up to release the top housing. It's a little more difficult than cherry style switches, so be sure to take your time because you don't want to break the bracket. And after the switch is open, the inside structure is the same as cherry switches. You also have the option to get these efficient switch opener tools, but if you're not building keyboards or lubing switches from time to time, it might be more worth it to invest in a small toolkit from iFixit instead. When opening up the switch, make sure you're careful because there's a spring inside. But after it's open, you have four main components. The top housing, the stem, the spring, and the bottom housing. Before lubing, remember taking it slow is important, and less is more. You can always go back and add more lube if it doesn't sound good, but it's difficult to unlube switches. This is an overlube switch versus a stock counterpart. It's completely ruined and the sound is not the same every single time. Starting with the bottom housing, we have the center column and rails. These rails are what guides the stem to go up and down. These protruding bumps on the stem are what goes onto these rails and is going to be the main point of contact and which is why we have to lube them carefully. Start off with a small amount of lube and try to cover the rails with a single stroke to lay a nice foundation. When it comes to lubing, less is more, so if there's visible globs of lube, you're probably putting in too much. Just make sure there's a thin shiny layer and you're good to go. Do the same lubing process on the other side and after you're satisfied, you can move on to the next step. Next, you want to lube the floor of the bottom housing, the center column on the outside and on the inside. This will help lubricate a bit of the spring bottom and make the stem move down even smoother. If you want your linear switches even smoother, you can also apply a small amount of lube on the contact flaps, which I would definitely recommend. Only lube these contacts for tactile switches if you have preferably 67 gram springs or higher. If you're using light tactile switches, do not do this step. Next, we lube the spring. With the remaining lube on your brush, brush the sides gently to coat them with a thin layer of lube. This reduces the sound that the springs make. Then apply lube to one of the ends. And after you're done that, place the lube side of the spring onto the bottom housing, and then brush the rest of the spring, topping it off at the other end. And next we have the most important area, lubing the stem. First you want to hold the cross portion of the stem so that you can lube the switch easier. Start off with the protruding sides and once again try to make a single stroke first to create a thin base coat going from top to bottom. Do this with the entirety of the stem, creating thin layers of lube carefully and meticulously. Make sure to lube the feet of the stem on the bottom as well. If you're lubing your tactile switches, do not lube the feet here. The tactility comes from the resistance of the feet rubbing on the contacts, so unless you have extremely tactile switches such as box navies, do not lube the feet. Lubing the feet will drastically reduce your tactility, and if you have light tactile switches like Gateron Browns, it will basically turn them into linear switches. You can also lube the pole on the bottom of the stem, but this part is not as important to lube, but if you do, make sure that you use small amounts, because too much can result in air pockets, which results in lube farts when pressing down on the switch. After all your lubing on the stem is done, place the stem onto the spring. Lastly, we have the top housing, and there are four surfaces to lube. Make sure to get each of these surfaces with lube because the stem will be contacting these areas when it goes up and down. Lubing this area is just as important as lubing the bottom housing, so take your time and evenly spread the lube on all four surfaces. 
After this area is complete, you can place it correctly back onto the stem with the big area facing the same side as the feet and the contacts. When closing up the switch, make sure that the stem isn't getting stuck and that it can freely move up and down. And when everything is aligned, press down and your loop switch is finally complete. There's a huge sound difference just by the switches alone, and it's even more prominent when you put it on some PBD keycaps and on a board. It is really time consuming to lube your switches, but if you want to make the most out of your mechanical keyboards, this is a great thing to do in the long run. It greatly reduces the loudness of the switch scratchiness, and the clack becomes even more satisfying especially with modifier keys. And that's how to lube your linear switches. Let me know if you have any questions down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.